Stephen Clark is the editor of Spaceflight Now. He joins us now from Austin, Texas, via Skype. So, Stephen, this was the final piece in a very long and expensive process. What does this accomplishment mean for China and also the other countries utilizing the Beidou system? Well, this successful launch uh, yesterday makes China the, the fourth, well, actually the third country to have a global navigation system uh, after the United States and Russia. So the United States has the GPS system, which has for the last 25 years been the gold standard for satellite navigation for airplanes, for cars, for people's cell phones, and uh, the, the successful uh, deployment of the final Beidou satellite uh, gives China sort of the same, uh, in the same league of capability as the GPS network, although there are differences. You mentioned that. So does it compete with J GPS or even Galileo, uh, the EU's system? Does it compare to it at all? Uh, they, they all have the same mission, which is to broadcast these uh, position and timing signals down to users on the Earth. Um, right, right now, GPS and, uh, and the Beidou system are the only two systems that really provide global coverage. Uh, Russia has a system called GLONASS that that has, uh, has near global coverage, and the European Union is still deploying their Galileo network for global coverage. But like I said, they're not really in direct competition because all the uh, global navigation networks offer their services, or at least some, a subset of their services, to the public around the world free of charge. So there's not any direct competition, but there are you know, certainly bragging rights for the countries that have reached this level. I know that you are watching the launch very closely. It happened less than 24 hours ago. What were your impressions of that launch? Well, it was interesting to watch the launch live. First of all, it was it was uh, good to see a, a Chinese rocket launch live. A, a lot of Chinese launches are not broadcast live. Uh, so I'm a I'm a space nerd and a rocket geek. So it's awesome to see the capabilities of uh, various countries and various rockets. Um, very stunning images of, of the satellite deploying from the rocket uh, as it reached orbit. And when it comes to China's space program and its future, what do you see and what will you be watching for in the months and years ahead? Well, a, a few things come to mind right off the, right off the bat, really. Uh, so next month uh, in July, China is going to launch uh, a Mars rover. Uh, it'll be the first mission to Mars uh, that China has launched independently. And uh, it's a really ambitious mission to, to actually try to land on the surface of Mars and, and drive a rover on the surface of Mars. Again, a capability that's only been demonstrated so far by the United States. So that's coming up. The launch is coming next month. It'll, it'll land on Mars uh, in 2021. Also, uh, uh, later this year, China is planning to launch a uh, mission, a robotic mission to the moon to try to collect samples uh, from the moon and bring them back to Earth. And that'll be a very, very ambitious step. And uh, if successful, that'll be the first time anybody has done that. Uh, any nation has brought back samples from the moon since the 1970s. You know, with Beto, you mentioned navigation is the primary uh, focus that people turn to first. But what are some of the other technologies um, that people can benefit from these navigation systems from space? Well, uh, I'm sure most of your viewers have used uh, satellite navigation today. As a matter of fact, if they've uh, been on the road, if they've uh, if they have uh, used an ATM machine, if they have conducted another type of electronic financial transaction, if uh, if you know if they're flying, uh, all these sort of if if, if they're eating uh, uh, food that was grown uh, in, in a crop on a farm, uh, it's a good chance that. The, the farmer that grew that used GPS navigation to uh, plot his or her uh, rows. So the, the, the limits are really, there's a famous saying that the limits of satellite navigation are only limited by your imagination. So the, the applications are really far and wide. All right, Stephen Clark uh, in Austin, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your insight.